alrighty friends. So I kind of had the weekend off and when I have a weekend off, I was thinking, what should I do with my time? Well, I decided to start a new project and that project is repainting the house. Now, you all know we got it painted before we moved in. We painted the, we had the trim, the doors, the ceilings and the walls painted. And we went through this whole thing of figuring out which paint color we should choose and all the things. And we picked a paint, we had it painted and I never was happy with the wall color. Josh was so sweet. I, it was probably like two or three weeks if not longer that I was like pretending I liked this paint color and I really, I really do not like this paint color at all. And I kind of broke down cause we had it done and I was feeling awful that, you know, we had it done and I don't like the color. And Josh was so sweet. He's like, it's just paint. We can repaint the walls. It's not a big deal to repaint walls. Now if we had to repaint the ceiling and the trim and the doors, that would be a big deal and that would not be fun to do. But painting walls is no big deal. So. I went yesterday and picked up two samples because when we were out of town for my sister-in-law's wedding, we went to someone's house and they had this beautiful color on the wall and I absolutely loved it. So yesterday I went and picked up two samples and I painted some samples on the walls and I'm so happy with one of the colors. So we are going to go pick up some paint and then I'm going to go home and I'm going to start painting the walls and I'll go over the colors when we get there, when we get back to the house and I'm actually going to do some of the painting because it's just walls. Walls are easy. I'll go really nice and slow and make sure we have a nice clean line. So I'm excited to update you on the new paint color. We just got home and we had run a bunch of errands and met with some family. So we were gone for quite some time. We're getting a little bit later of a start than I normally would, but I want to show you what I did this morning early is I did two samples on the walls. This top color here, this is agreeable gray, which a lot of you, when we were originally talking about paint, had recommended this one. But when we were in a house in Idaho, one of my sister's friend's house, they had this color down here. It's kind of hard to see because of the way the sun is shining on it. This is Glossomer Veil, and it's a little bit of a warmer gray tone than this one. And I think this is the color that when I was talking about a color I wanted, like a warmer gray, that is exactly what I wanted. And I ended up going with, don't mind the hole in the wall, we're gonna fix that. <laughs> That's from doing some networking in the house Josh did. But this is a warmer gray than versus a beige, which is what I got. Cause I put accessible beige on the walls and it's just too yellow and too beige for my liking. So I had these two samples here that I did this morning. I also did two samples here. It's really hard to see, but this one up here is the agreeable gray and this is the Glossomer Veil. And then in here, I took some time to, because I wanted to make sure it was a color I actually really liked. I cut it in the Glossomer Veil up here and around the doors. I wanted to see what it looked like around the trim and kind of around an area that was a little bit bigger and I'm just really, I'm really happy with it. So what we did is we ended up getting a five gallon bucket of this Glossomer Veil. It's Sherwin-Williams. And we got it in the, what was it? Not super shiny, but um, kind of like the medium sheen. Satin. Satin. And then I pulled out a roller, a, Thing. I don't have a pad for the big roller because I do have a big roller, but I didn't buy one of those today. And this, I was just using this sample this morning, but this isn't the exact sheen, so I definitely needed, I'm going to have to do the second coat with this one up here. But we are getting, what time is it? It's 4.15. We're getting a late start on the day. In here, my number one goal, because what we want to do is we want this area to start to feel like a cozy inviting living room and right now it kind of feels like a college dorm room because our tv is on our coffee table and it, it it's comfortable because our couch is comfortable but it doesn't feel complete and so we want us we want this area to feel homey and inviting and right now it just doesn't feel like that so one thing that josh would really like to do is to be able to mount this tv on this wall we know that we want the tv on this wall because we are not gonna put a TV above our fireplace. 
So my goal is going to be to try to get one coat of paint on this wall. Cut in, rolled, and everything. I need to take my coat off. I need to change my clothes so that we can start doing that. Josh is gonna pull the TV and the speakers away from the wall so that we can go ahead and start getting some paint on this wall. This is super exciting. It's been a long time coming, <laughs> getting a color picked out and being able to focus on the interior of the house. This is definitely something I was not planning on doing until yesterday when Josh was like, you should go pick up some paint samples. And I did go pick up paint samples. When I pour paint, I like to have a cardboard box down so that I, if I dribble anything, I'm dribbling it onto the cardboard box. Just like I did there. I splattered and there's a cardboard box there. And what I'm gonna do is this container was super convenient when I was cutting in. So I'm going to pour my paint into this container because it's got a nice handle on it. And this is what I'm gonna use to cut in around the doors and trim and windows. That's probably good. And you know what, I should have gotten a paintbrush before I did that so I can wipe the side here. That was not super smart thinking. So let me go run and grab a ah, paintbrush. So when I cut in, I love to use an angled brush. I get the best cut in when I do that. And then I don't, you'll see what I do. I just go kind of slow and steady. Oh, see, I totally made a mess here. This is not ideal. You kind of want to start with a clean container, but we're going to work with it. We're going to put this back on. In the time it took me <laughs> to get dressed or changed, Josh is moving the TV. And now I don't do anything to really prep the walls or prep anything when I cut in. I will do something to protect the floors when I roll. But for now, all I'm going to do is take my paintbrush, put some paint on it, not too much, so that it doesn't drip. I offload it a little bit and then I just go really slow and I cut it in manually just like this. So another thing Josh is doing is he replaced all of our switches and our outlets. They're all smart switches and smart outlets. So he's going to go through and help me by removing those so we don't get paint on them. So the coolest thing about these smart switches that Josh installed, at least for me, is that the little blue light indicates which switches are on and which switches are off. So if you turn it off, then the light goes away. You turn it on, the light goes on. So I absolutely love that. I should kind of do a little, oh. Oh, and I just dropped my paintbrush on the floor. But no worries, we have a damp cloth. We can wipe that up. So if you're new here, we replaced all this trim this last summer. And if you ever wondered what those little blue pieces of tape are, that's where the painters need to touch up paint. We never had them come back to touch up paint because I didn't like the color. And so I wasn't sure if that needed to be done. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get this repainted. You can see a little bit better here how yellow and kind of beigey the color is. I wanted something that was neutral, that was a warmer tone, but I didn't necessarily want it this warm. And so I'm glad that we found a color that's like a in the gray family, but it's kind of more of a warm gray. This is gonna take me a long time because we have all of this fancy trim to cut around and you can even see like that was an area of the painters. They did a fantastic job, but you know, there was a couple areas that were missed and 
that was one of them but I will go ahead and cut that in I probably when I do this area I will get a little tiny paintbrush to do those really fine detailed areas so I guess the best thing I should do right now is just get to work get cutting in because we've got a lot of windows and a lot of doors to cut around in this house I don't think I explained it too well at the beginning, but if you were here when we first purchased this house, we decided to replace all the trim and Josh did a fantastic job on that. He, We also wanted the ceilings painted because they just needed to be refreshed and we needed the walls and the doors painted. So before we could move in, we got all the trim done on the main house. I got it caulked and filled in and we wanted to move in as soon as possible so we could put our other house on the market and sell it. So we hired somebody to come in and paint the ceilings, the walls and the trim because we needed it done quickly and we wanted it done really well. We really wanted the trim to be sprayed because we wanted that really clean finish. When Josh and I first got married, eight years ago this month, we purchased a home in the suburbs and we completely remodeled it. We, we touched every single surface of the house. The only thing we didn't do was move walls, but every finish and trim was replaced. And I actually took two weeks off and I painted the ceilings, the walls, the trim, and the doors in that house. Josh replaced the trim there as well and we did not have a sprayer and so we i hand painted the trim and it looked absolutely beautiful but you could see the brush strokes and so something josh really wanted this time around was we wanted that really clean finish on the trim because he did such a fantastic job doing it we decided to go ahead and hire someone so we could move into the house to put our other house on the market as quickly as possible and we didn't have to worry about painting the ceilings and we could get that really beautiful finish on the trim and so that's why when I chose this color that I really didn't like, that I just felt guilty because we had paid someone to come in and paint it. Josh was so sweet though, because we still got the beautiful finish on our trim, the ceilings, we didn't have to mess with painting, the doors look fantastic, and it's so easy to paint walls. It takes time, it's kind of tedious, but as long as you go slow, you can get a really clean finish on walls with not that much i don't want to say effort because it's definitely effort but that much i don't know it, it was a lot of work to get this done but we can have it done and it can look really nice it's crazy how much a color on the wall can affect the way you feel about something you wouldn't for me i wouldn't think that the color of this these walls would bother me that much but it really bothered me and i think it bothered me too because every time i looked at them i felt a little bit guilty that i had chose a color i don't like which is silly but it's the truth and I haven't wanted to make this living room feel like a cozy finished room, like purchase any furniture for it that actually fits this space because I didn't know what color I was ultimately gonna go with. And so by tackling this project, we are able to start thinking about making this living room feel like a home and somewhere super cozy to be in so I don't know if that makes sense but I kind of wanted to explain that that it's okay if you choose the wrong color I've forgiven myself and I'm so happy with this color we chose and it's been fun to start working on some home projects again the garden project is in full swing it probably was a little bit silly that we decided to tackle this project I'm so glad we decided to do it but it is a lot of work in the midst of the garden project going on as well when you're cutting in, I've definitely found that it helps if you work, if you're right-handed, you work pulling towards you. So I'm pulling this way and I can control the paint. I can control the brush a lot better than if I'm trying to work the opposite direction. So the whole time that I'm going to be cutting in on the floor, I'm going to be scooting backwards like this so that I can have the most control. And I really, really, really want to make sure that I have as little paint on my brush as possible so that it doesn't pool on the end of the brush. Because that's when it starts to glob down on your trim, which is exactly what you don't want. That's why you'll see me go like this, getting any excess paint off the brush as I can and I can get a nice clean cut in that way. Josh is bringing me in a ladder because I basically 
and done where I can reach with the step ladder and I'm gonna need a full ladder to get around the ceiling. Can you put that ladder for me, Josh, please, over in that corner? Because I'm gonna do the same thing when I'm cutting into the ceiling. I'm gonna be pulling it away toward me the whole time. So that way I can just keep scooting backwards and backwards. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then if you're able to find some sort of drop cloth or something for putting over the TV, I think that probably would be good. When we were installing the trim, we got a lot of questions asking us why we weren't painting the walls before we installed the trim. And the reason you want to install the trim first is because what you want to do is you want to install the trim and then you want to cloak the trim, which is going to have a little bit of white on the trim and on the walls. And then you can cut in with your paintbrush right up to the trim and you're going to have a nice clean line. If you install, excuse me, if you paint the walls first and then you install the trim and then you caulk, you're still then gonna have to go back and cut in where the caulk line is. So that's why we went ahead and we did the trim first when we remodeled our first house. That's something that Josh went over and over and over. We did together because we were like, what order do we do it in? And then we finally Googled it and we asked, what do professionals do? Do they do the trim or the walls first when they paint? And you do the walls after the trim. So Josh is running to the store to get a plastic cover to cover the TV and speakers just so that we don't mess them up. I know that we own a canvas drop cloth, but I'm pretty sure when we painted our last house basically a year ago now in order to get it ready to move, that drop cloth ended up in my parents' stuff. So Josh is gonna go get a drop cloth because I don't want to roll without having something down because rolling does splatter a little bit. I did not think we would get to this project for probably a year or so. If you guys were back when we first bought this house and we were remodeling, there's a bonus room that's got a couple bedrooms upstairs and we we're never able to finish that area because we waited about four and a half months for doors to be installed and Josh could not install the trim until the doors were installed and we can't install or we can't paint up there until the doors and trim are installed just by the way we paint and everything. And so I was just accepting that this is how this was going to be. So it was really awesome when Josh encouraged me to go ahead and get this project going because ultimately we need some new furniture for this room. This room is hard to tell from the angles I'm showing today, but it's a fan shape room. And so the sectional that we have is super comfortable and it's still in great condition. It was the first piece of furniture Josh never and I ever purchased together. We purchased it with some wedding money we got, but it does not fit this space at all. So eventually this sectional is gonna go upstairs in that bonus room, but we need furniture for down here that fits the space. And I just mentally couldn't think about purchasing in any furniture for this room until I knew what color the walls were gonna be. Josh is not home yet, so I'm just gonna keep cutting in but I wanted to show you that no, I do not always uh, have this perfect. Sometimes I splatter, but you can see it just takes a little bit of a damp cloth and I can get all of this up. I'm not sure why I made such a mess. Normally I don't make such a, well, that's not true. <laughs> I, I do make a mess, but I do clean up after myself. So we're gonna get all this cleaned up. And then because Josh is picking up a drop cloth, I will be able to put a canvas drop cloth down. The reason I like canvas drop cloths on the bottom is because they absorb the paint versus plastic, doesn't dry, and so if you step on it and then walk around, you are spreading paint everywhere. So I want a canvas one for the floor so it can absorb and dry the paint. Josh got the goods. He is changing because he is going to roll while I continue to cut in. I'm the cut in-er of the family. I don't think that's a word, but that is, I'm the one that 
has a lot more practice of cutting in than Josh does, so that's what I'm gonna do. And he is going to roll. So he just got some painted clothes on, and he also bought some paper and some tape. And if you look at the paint box, Josh, we've got the paint paper dis uh, distributor. Okay, that was just for on the floor. Yeah. Um, it was three dollars. I thought I was getting a lot of the Yeah. It's. It, do you know what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, you're saying that you, we had some, but that there was a that we were rolling. Yeah. I was thinking more just to put up against the just Trip? very simple. No, no, no. I think that's a good idea. So we are going to cover the base trim with just a little bit of paper and tape. Not because I'm going to use that to for cutting in at all. It's just so that when we roll, we don't splatter on the trip. Because rolling does tend to splatter just a little bit. Even if you buy the expensive paint that's not supposed to splatter, it reduces the amount of splatter, but it doesn't fully get rid of the splatter. So we folded this canvas drop cloth in half just so it's not so unruly. Can we put it um, like this? Yeah. Cool yeah. Okay, and we start in the corner. Doesn't matter, wherever you want to start. Corner probably makes sense. So out here in our paint containers where we should have, let's see. I know I've let people borrow it and it could have ended up, darn, I don't see it. But what I do see while I'm out here are some paint brushes, little ones. I'm gonna bring this because I'm gonna need this and this too probably for cutting in. We need this because this is a 18 inch roller. But what I cannot find is the, yeah, this is what we want. Um, what's it called? the paper tape dispenser where it does the tape and the paper at the same time. It might have ended up in my parents because my parents helped me paint my entire last house. We did it over a couple weeks and I'm sure some of my paint stuff and their paint stuff got mixed up, which is not a big deal except for the fact that we're painting tonight. So we'll just do what we can with what we have and then we can do that manually. What I have found with all my experience in painting are these really wide so this is our traditional I think this is a nine inch roller but if you're going to do a lot of painting it's best to invest there are a few dollars extra to invest in the 12 inch roller you can put a ton more paint on it and you can use these really big paint what are these called troughs that makes a big difference so while Josh is getting this set up another benefit is that this doesn't twist in your hands when you're trying to apply pressure Oh, I didn't so even like, think about that. When you're pushing on something long, when you're pushing on it, then it's constantly trying to twist the oh. opposite direction of this versus having two supports. Oh, Sometimes. well that's awesome. So because I was in the garage, it's kind of dusty. He wants to clean it off just to make sure that, you know, that dust isn't ending up in the walls. It is worth taking a little extra time when painting because you can, you know, paint dust, hair, debris into your walls and then that shows up on the final product. So he's cleaning that while he's doing that. I'm gonna go tape and paper. I had no idea this project was really gonna happen, that we were gonna actually do this. This escalated very, very quickly. Yesterday, Josh was just like, I'm ready to get this living room put together. We can't do that until we paint because he doesn't wanna mount the TV until we paint. And what I was thinking was, we would wait until we have that whole bonus area, upstairs area done before we paint. But that's putting off, this we can get done in a matter of a few days, but that big project up there, that's gonna take a long time. So it's worth just going ahead and getting this done now so we can enjoy it sooner. I don't even know if that makes sense. But anyway, so Josh was just saying, Go get samples, see if you can find something you like yesterday, because I really didn't have anything to do. I kind of got all my work done. I was like, oh good, I have a weekend, that's awesome. And then I went and picked up paint samples, and now here we are doing a huge project. So I went from having a bunch of time to now creating a new project, but I'm excited because what it's gonna do is it's gonna allow us to kind of have a, 
a living room that feels put together, not just like something that feels hodgy podged put together. I don't think that's a word, but it's a word for today. So I think we're gonna go ahead and skip putting the paper on because just having the tape here, it creates enough of an edge so if anything splashes, it's not gonna actually hit the trip. So that's awesome. So that will save me a step of having to put this paper on here. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna roll this back up and we may find another use for it somewhere else. But for now, Josh is ready to do the rolling. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, well, I better start cutting in because Josh is going to get that done so much faster than what I can cut in. So, so that he has an area that I can, or that he can work on, I better get back to work. What we've decided is to try to get on this main wall that we started on, the one Josh is rolling right now, to get two coats both cut in and rolled tonight because today is Saturday night and tomorrow's Sunday, so Josh has tomorrow off and he would like to be able to mount the TV. I can't mount a TV, so I can continue to cut in throughout the week and weekend, but I can't mount a TV. Josh was able to completely get one coat on this wall, so he's gonna continue on around here. He's putting tape around, and he's just gonna continue to roll, and I'm continuing just to cut in and paint around the areas that the, obviously the roller's not gonna be able to fit, which, you know, like right in here is where I'm working on now. So something to note is Josh is putting that tape on the trim, but he and I, when we put the tape on the trim, we aren't putting the tape all the way up to the wall because it helps if I can see the wall so that I can get this really beautiful clean cut. If I can't see where the wall meets, then it's gonna be a lot more difficult for me to get a nice clean cut. When it comes to painting, slow and steady is the best thing. There's no fast way out of it if you want a clean finish. So the best thing to do is get yourself an audiobook, put some YouTube on in the background, listen to some music, whatever it takes to kind of get in the zone and slow and steady. It's a tedious, tedious process if you want a beautiful clean finish. So that's why I am the one that does it just because I have the most practice in it and I my personality is not one that is super, super attention to detail and fine finishing, but I do want to make this look as beautiful as possible because Josh spent so much effort and time installing this trim like he did in our first home. You might not see him a ton in the videos because he likes to be the behind the scenes type person, but he does stuff for our family every single day to better our lives whether it's things, big things like installing this trim or little things like putting the food away after we eat dinner. It's gonna be our eighth year wedding anniversary coming up the end of February. And I just love him so much and I really appreciate the effort he puts into making our little family's lives the best it can be. But because he did such a good job with the trim, I want to do as best of a job with this painting job as possible because attention to detail is something that Josh definitely, definitely notices. When we were remodeling our first house, like I said we did earlier, I used to get frustrated with him because he is so attention to detail that everything we did, especially because we were learning how to do everything for the first time in that first house, took forever. And I would get frustrated because I'm like, oh my gosh, this is taking so long. No one is gonna notice because if anything was off with the piece of trim he was installing, or the flooring that we were installing or whatever it was, we would rip it up and redo it until it was done correctly. And that used to drive me crazy when we first got married. We were gonna be married for eight years in the end of February. And one thing is after that home was done being remodeled, I appreciated Josh's attention to detail. Cause what he used to say, because I would say, no one's gonna notice that. No one's gonna notice that. It's good enough, it's fine. He would say, well, you know what? I'm gonna notice it. I live in this house and I'm the one that's gonna have to look at it every day. And after that house was remodeled and absolutely stunning, I so appreciated Josh's attention to detail because he was right. We are the ones that are living here and we are the ones 
that are going to see it every day and it's best to take the time to do it to where it looks nice so that you can be proud of your work when it's done and that's something that i have definitely learned from him is that it's worth going slow and trying to do the best job you can do so that you can really enjoy the fruits of your labor so anyway love you josh thanks for all you do for our little family all at the same time. So he is fed and content and now now he's on me. Josh and I are starving. We've only had a breakfast burrito for breakfast and that was probably, that was, it's 6.45 right now and we ate breakfast at 10.30. So I have some leftover shepherd's pie. We are in pantry challenge right now and so we're trying to avoid eating out. I did not set that as a rule or anything like that, but I think that's kind of a given when you're in a pantry challenge slash kind of like no spend challenge. We are going out though next week for um, just a date. His grandparents are in town and they really want to spend some time with him. So they said, do you want to go on a date? And Josh and I haven't been on a real date date in a very, very long time. And so we have a gift certificate to a really nice restaurant in downtown Vancouver, Washington. And so we are gonna go on a date. Anyway, all that to say, we're eating at home tonight. It's been really fun getting back into project mode with Josh. We both really enjoy doing that. It's something that we did a ton of together when we were first married in our first house. And so it's been kind of fun to get back in project mode. So we're gonna heat this up and then we're gonna eat and we're just gonna keep painting. We're gonna keep painting. I'm painting this room too. I don't know if Josh knows we're painting the kitchen too. And so he definitely does not have as much area to roll as I have to cut in because I have so many windows to cut around. That's what I've been working on. That if he, if that one wall that the TV goes on is not dry enough for him to roll a second coat, I'm gonna ask him to come in here and just start rolling in the kitchen too. So maybe while we're in here together, we might have a half painted room and that's okay. <laughs> totally fine. Mm, dinner smells delicious. This is shepherd's pie that we made with homegrown celery and potatoes. Oh, feels good to have some food in us. After we ate, well, since we ate, Josh has continued to roll. And now that it's been a couple hours, Josh is actually going into the entry now. So we're gonna paint the entry too. Orbit, get off there. <laughs> Orbit found a bed. Come on. Orbit, your dad's trying to move. <laughs> That's funny. It's like when we try to make the bed in the morning and the dogs won't get off the bed. So I've just been continuing to cut in. I've kind of not been doing it as sequentially as I normally would. Normally I would like go all along the floor, but I'm kind of doing it like areas I can reach and then I don't know anyway but it's been long enough now that this wall can get a second coat and this is our major goal today really honestly when we started this all i thought we were going to get to was this wall i didn't think we were honestly going to continue on throughout this entire room and we're making some serious progress so i am going to go ahead and get a second coat cut in on that main wall now we have done areas where josh is rolling where i haven't done like i haven't cut in ideally you would cut in and then roll on the first coat i'm not really that worried about it if josh rolls and then i cut in but now that i am starting the second coat on this particular wall i want to make sure that i'm doing it in the proper order so it has the best finish it can have now this little container has worked out beautiful for being a handled container that has been working great. This is the first time I'm having to fill it up. And I've almost cut this whole room in. I haven't, ooh, okay, cut the ceiling in at all, except for on that one wall that we're heading back to. It is currently 7.45. My bedtime is about 8.30, 9 o'clock. 
So my goal is to try to get this wall cut in for a second time. I'm gonna go in a little bit more of a strategic pattern so, so that I make sure I cut everything in and I don't miss anything. But we're gonna get as much done today as possible. I'm already super thrilled with the progress we've already made. I'm really, really happy about it. Josh got the entry all rolled. I got this wall all cut in for the second time. So now I'm gonna go ahead and since I'm available, I'm gonna go ahead and get that wall rolled for the second time so that wall can be completely done. We did it. We got that wall done with two coats. Now this wall here needs a first coat with the roller. Up there needs a coat with the first roll. And in that corner there on the other side of the fireplace needs one more coat. So before I put the roller away, I wanna get one more coat on the walls so that there is one coat that's rolled on the whole wall. There's no way I will finish cutting in today because it's gonna get too late and I'm tired. I have an early morning date with someone every morning. So I gotta get to bed, but I can at least get one coat rolled on and then I will know where I haven't cut in yet. I'll go through the entire room And I'll finish cutting in everywhere where I haven't cut in tomorrow. And I'll make sure that the rest of the room has one entire coat on it before I then try to do a double coat on some of the areas I've already done. And I will be a little bit more strategic. I don't know if strategic is the right word, but I'll be a little bit more uh, methodical about how I go about painting the second coat so that I know exactly where I have painted <laughs> A second coat and where I haven't because the second coat is definitely harder to tell where you've painted and where you haven't. These 12 inch rollers make the world of difference when rolling because they can hold so much more paint. So if you've ever only ever painted with a nine inch roller which is the typical size it's worth the investment on getting one of these 12 inch rollers because not only does it paint more because it has more surface area but it can hold more paint so it's less going in and refilling your roller so it just saves so much time We officially have one coat rolled on this entire room along with probably, let me look, 80% one coat of cut in, cutting in and this wall is completely done. And in the entry, it's all rolled once. I still need to cut in the entry. Now what I have done to kind of end the evening is there was quite a bit, not quite a bit, but there was enough paint left in my tray that I did not want to waste. So I came in here and I did one roll in here along this wall, this wall, just to right there. You can see where I ended it right there. I just didn't want to waste the paint. I didn't want to put it back in the container. And then I also did that same thing. I came in here and I rolled this wall, this wall, 
this wall and I started this wall. This area is actually almost completely done because this morning I cut it in. I guess I didn't finish rolling down here, so I gotta finish rolling, rolling down here. The kitchen is kind of a mess, not really. I mean, we had our leftover containers I need to take care of. Some paint stuff here, I'm gonna leave here. Oh, and then what I did with my roller, because those rolling pads on those extra large rollers are kind of expensive, and I only had the one, I wrapped it up in a garbage bag, and that will keep it fresh until tomorrow. We have, I have a brunch I'm going to with a friend in the morning, and then I have the afternoon, and then we have a family dinner we're going to tomorrow night. So I probably will only get to cutting in, and then maybe on Monday I'll start rolling, I don't really know. Maybe Josh will start rolling, I don't really know. He probably will want to mount the TV if I had to guess. So we'll just see what happens tomorrow. We got so much stuff done today. I am completely shocked with the progress we made. This was not something that I was anticipating we were gonna be doing today or tomorrow, and we started it, so it's awesome. And we got one of the biggest goals done, which is that wall. So what I need to do now is go clean up. I have one of my brushes. Maybe you can hear the water running. I have one of my, the cutting in brush. Um, running in water so that I could do some other things <laughs> and it could be cleaning while I'm doing some other things, but I need to get that finished cleaned up. I need to get myself cleaned up and then I need to hit the hay so that I can get up early tomorrow morning. So the next day we've been working on this project. Josh is getting ready to put the TV mount on the wall. And of course, after all of his measuring, where does the mount need to be? Right here. <laughs> right exactly where those outlets are. So what's your plan? Are you going to remove those outlets? Ask me in 10 minutes. <laughs> Josh needs 10 minutes to figure it out. Either we have to offset it to the left, right. I don't think no, it down is an option. It needs to be. Um, the problem is the TV mount mounts on the very bottom of the TV. So if we, right now we want to mount it right here. So the TV is like right here. But if we put the mount any higher, then the TV is going to be way too like it'd be, high. It'd probably be like the top up here. Yeah, which would look. Which is absurd. Yep. So we'll be back to figure out where we're go what we're going to do, what he's going to do. Okay. So today is Monday. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Me. Good morning, friends. Let's start over. Today is Monday. Yesterday was Sunday. We started this project on Saturday afternoon, this painting project. And yesterday you saw that Josh was working on the TV. He figured that out. He's got it part of the mounted, but I went to bed. And so we didn't actually get the TV on the wall, which is fine, we'll do that tonight. Oh, and he did decide he's gonna move this outlet box to right over there, but he needed to order a piece. He's gonna pick it up from Home Depot today so that he can move that over there. He got the mount on the wall, and so later, probably tonight, we will be able to mount the TV and get it up off this coffee table. Yesterday morning, I worked on cutting in a little bit in around the entry. I spent about two and a half hours, and I cut in the majority of these big windows and doors. And as I was getting ready for the day, I only was able to work on this project in the morning, I looked down at my container I was using to paint. I've just been refilling these sample containers to use with the paint that we actually purchased to paint with because it has a handle and it's easy to use. And I looked down at the name and I was sorely disappointed that I spent those two-ish hours cutting in with the wrong color. The color is so similar, I did not realize until I looked at the name. And let me show you. It might be hard to tell, but these are the two different colors. This whole section is the correct color, which is Glossomer Veil, and this section is Agreeable Gray. You might be able to see that this is a little bit more blue, it's a little bit more bright, and this is more of a natural tone. This has more of a green undertone, and it's less bright. And I have to say, I am extremely happy with the color. I love Glossomer Veil. It's what I originally wanted. I just didn't know this was out there until I saw it in someone's home. So I did all around this window, all around the tops. You can see the two different colors here. This is where you can really tell that there are two different colors, but when it was wet, I just couldn't tell. This is agreeable gray. This is Glossomer Veil. 
So what I need to do is go through and repaint that. I think because the colors are so similar, I, I had a, almost a moment of panic and depression when I realized what I had done. But then when I thought about it, the colors are so similar that I think when I do my second coat, you won't even be able to tell and I won't have to do a third coat over it. So we'll, we'll, only time will tell once we get the second coat on and it dries. If I had done the wrong color on the second coat, that would have been a lot more devastating. So I really want to get this room put together so we can have our evening routine back. Yesterday, we were not able to have our normal evening routine and I really missed it. So my big, big goal today is going to be, I just need to finish cutting in up here for the first coat, finish cutting in around the ceiling up here. You can see where I still need to cut in for the first time, way at the top a couple corners and then I need to cut in in the entry around the top and then this room in the entry will have one full coat of the first coat so once I do that I'm gonna let it dry and then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna put the first coat of paint in here this area is not gonna need very much rolling I mean I could roll right there and right there but for the most part this room is just gonna be cutting in it's coming out really, really dark, the color, but the color in here is not that dark. It's just the way the shadows are playing. But I think I'm gonna be able to get this room at least one coat cut in this morning. Once I do that, then I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to cut in the second time and then I'm gonna roll the whole thing. My goal is to, like I said, get this room painted and put back together. I don't think I'm gonna be able to put it all back together today because I need to obviously clean up the mess and there are areas where there's paint that I dripped on the floor, but sometimes it's better just to let it dry and then you can just click the whole piece of paint up. So I've got quite a few, well maybe about a few spots where I need to clean up. Boys, boys, they're wrestling and having a good time this morning. It's early. The landscaper should be here in a little bit, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get going on painting. After I realized my mistake, I did go ahead and I did, had about half an hour where I was able to paint with the correct color. And yesterday I just wrapped my brush in saran wrap and it's nice and still wet so that I can just continue to use it. I don't need to go through and wash it. Last night I could just wrap it up and then reuse it. So we're gonna go ahead and get more paint into our container we're reusing. I might have to have Josh on his way home from work today pick up another five gallons of paint because I know eventually we will use it. I'm gonna fill that all the way up. When I did this room originally, you probably saw I was bouncing around. When I go back to do the second coat, I don't wanna bounce around because once you do the second coat, it's hard to see where I've worked and where I haven't worked. And I wanna make sure that I get everything, a second coat on it. And so I'm gonna work very methodically through the room. So we're gonna start up here. I'm home alone today. Well, my dad actually might stop by today because he wants to watch some of the lawn works. We're moving a bunch of dirt today. So that's very exciting. So it's gonna be fun to be here and be able to watch them work out these windows. So he kind of wanted to come and see what was going to be happening out there. And I was, I was going to text him this morning and say, hey, you can bring some paint clothes over if you want. My mom loves to paint, but she is babysitting my niece today, so she wouldn't be able to come over. So anyway, I'm going to get this done. I'm, I have to say I'm so happy with this color. I was staring at it last night. The longer I have it on my walls, the happier I am that this is the color we chose. And it's amazing how a color, it seems so small and insignificant, but it really affects the way that I feel about my house. And when there was that color that I really didn't like, it, it almost gave me anxiety every time I looked at it for a couple reasons. One, is because I just didn't like the color. Two, I felt guilty every time I looked at it because I know that we spent money on that color and it seemed like a waste. But we're gonna be in this house for a long time and it doesn't cost that much to buy some paint and fix it for how it's gonna make me feel. It's gonna be worth every penny spent 
because the way that I feel in my home, and it's gonna feel more like my home because it's a color I chose and I actually like, then I think it's worth it. So the biggest thing is the time investment of getting this done because this is a lot of work, but it's fun and it's good to see progress being made. And that's exactly what's happening is progress is being made. It's almost two o'clock and I got the entire room, living room cut in for the first time. And I got the base from here down in this room, anywhere that I could kind of crawl on the floor slash I didn't have to get on the ladder. I was able to get this area done. You can see they're working outside. They're doing a ton of moving of dirt, which is really exciting. Tibro is having fun watching, just hanging out there. Orbit is keeping a close eye on all that's going on as well. All right, <laughs> I got a lot done in the beginning of the day. Toward the end of the day, things started slowing down just a little bit because I'm here by myself. And then my dad came over for a little bit and he wanted to see the construction and all the yard work that's happening. So I was able to get a second coat of cutting in along this wall, but I have not finished the second coat of cutting in on this back wall. I'm still going to try to go ahead and do that today if I can, but we're just getting as much done as we can today. I need to get dinner in the oven. I'm starving and we're just doing a freezer meal today, so it's super easy. But my dad is gonna come over tomorrow and he's gonna help me roll. So that's why my biggest goal is to try to get the cutting in done the second time in that room so that he can come and just roll it and be done. 